the Anti-Mage has shown up through sheer power of will. Say goodbye to your mana and your buildings. AM is here to take them all. With his high mobility and damage potential, he's more than able to bring an end to magic. Blink, and you'll miss it. It's the history of Anti-Mage. Just want to let you know that this video is made possible by my lovely patrons, and a big shout out to E Point Man who joined the $20 tier this month. Take in all that glory. Head over to my Patreon to show your support, and don't forget to follow me on Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter. Anti-Mage is a melee agility hero who, as his name suggests, is highly effective against mages, and his versatile blink spell makes him a strong farmer, split pusher, and assassin. His first ability is Mana Break. This is a passive that allows Anti-Mage to burn a target's mana with each auto attack, removing a flat amount as well as a percentage of the target's max mana with every hit. Additionally, the affected unit will take 50% of the mana burn as physical damage, which is sure to bring the pain to those pesky support heroes. A great spell at any stage of the game, this lets you harass very effectively during the laning phase, as well as deplete the enemy's resources so they can't chuck their spells at you. Since Manta Style is a common pickup on Anti-Mage, it should be noted that Illusions will only deal half the mana burn value, but with the hero's naturally high agility and base attack time, I don't think that's going to be an issue. His second skill is Blink. This is a simple point-and-click ability. You instantly flash to a location a moderate distance away on a fairly short cooldown. This is a highly versatile skill that enables Anti-Mage's gameplay. You can use it to get yourself out of a gank or generally sticky situation, blink between the lane and jungle camps to farm extra fast, or get the jump on someone for a quick kill. When it comes down to it, this is what makes AM such a good split-pushing hero. Nothing is quite as slippery as a farmed Anti-Mage beating down a Tier 3 tower. And what makes him even more annoying is his third ability, Counterspell. This passively grants you a pretty solid amount of magic resistance in addition to its active component. When cast, this creates a shield for a short amount of time that reflects targeted spells back at the enemies. If timed correctly, no amount of hexes, silences, or stuns will ever be an issue for you. The Anti-Mage's ultimate is Mana Void. This is a targeted nuke that deals magic damage to a unit based on each point of mana that they're missing. On top of this, this deals the same amount of magic damage in a small radius around the initial target, and it applies a mini stun, so feel free to use it on someone channeling or teleporting away. This is definitely a great way to finish off an enemy after you blink in and burn all of their mana. And it makes those intelligence heroes extra tasty, as you can blow up an entire team if everyone's grouped up. By farming carefully and staying off your enemy's radar, you can easily amass a whole cornucopia of items which will have your foes begging for mercy. And all of this can be accomplished by taking your vitamins, staying in school, and sheer purity of will. Anti-Mage made his way into the world of Dota All-Stars in version 2.60 on March 1st, 2004. Here, he's named Magina, although I'm sure you're resisting the urge to call him Mangina. And he uses the model of Illidan Stormrage's base form. Terrorblade is actually the one who uses Illidan's demonic form as his model, but we'll get to that in a moment. His first few descriptions were on the brief side, with the 2.60 blurb calling him an anti-mage hero. L like what? Y yeah, it's it's his name. 5.1 updated this to be an anti-mage hero, adept at damaging mana and 5.58 specified that he's an anti-mage hero, adept at damaging mana, and destroying spellcasters. You see that? That's what the writing process looks like. In 6.0, the Wizard Whomper received his first actual little story. Born with an unusual relationship to mana, Magina can see and manipulate mana in its purest form. The Scourge's tainting of Hyjal and the World Tree damages the very fabric of magic woven into this world, and Magina will sacrifice himself to preserve the balance of nature. The next update in AM's lore happened in 6.06, .06, but it took place in Terrorblade's description. Like Anti-Mage, Terrorblade had a series of inconsequential descriptions, but this version was the one that connected the two heroes together, and seemingly acknowledged that they shared Illidan's model. It reads, Terrorblade is the twin brother of the Anti-Mage. Both of Night Elf descent, Terrorblade was drawn in by the powers of the undead, plunging deeper into the Abyss of No Return, growing large, gargoyle-like wings to symbolize his breaking from the Night Elf world. Now the update to Magina's lore would occur a couple of years later in version 6.39, where it would lean much deeper into the brotherhood between himself and the Soul Keeper. This story was written by a user named Pronstar who won a hero description contest, so job well done. It's pretty good. Twin sons to the Great Prophet, Terrorblade and Magina were blessed with divine powers. Terrorblade granted an unnatural affinity with life forces, Magina gifted with energy manipulation, 
Magina's eventual overexposure to the magics gradually augmented his elemental resistances and bestowed him the unique ability to move faster than light itself. Now, broken by Terrorblade's fall to the dark side, Magina answers the Sentinel's call in a desperate bid to redeem his brother. Every bitter strike turns the Scourge's evil essences upon themselves, culminating in a finale that forces his enemies to awaken the void within and spontaneously implode. Anti-Mage's voice responses use the Demon Hunter quotes, whereas Terrorblade is the one who uses Illidan's. They are pretty different from each other, so I wanted to make that distinction. But in any case, the performance here makes Magina sound imposing, determined, everything my edgelord high school version of me ever wanted. Slap that voice track on a Night Elf Ninja, and come on, what's not to like? The time has come. My blade thirsts on a Doranador. None shall survive. Starting in version 6.77, which was around December of 2012, Anti-Mage had about a 1 in 7 chance of spawning with the name Burning, a reference to the professional player of the same name. Now, the timeline for this is pretty weird, but bear with me. Burning participated in TI2 in August 2012 as part of Team DK, and did incredibly well as a carry player, having a 100% win rate with Anti-Mage, among other accomplishments. So back in Dota All-Stars, the fun name was implemented a few months later as a way to celebrate his performance, since both Dota 2 and Dota All-Stars had updates simultaneously at this time. It's a very befitting name, as Burning's performance became synonymous with the hero for years to come. So hats off to you, B-God, you magnificent creature you. Anyway, back to the nostalgia portion of the show. The anti-magic madman had always been heavily focused on the theme of countering spellcasters in some form, but it took a lot of refining to get to the point where he could single-handedly dismantle enemy buildings. He was based off of a hero in Dota TFT named Yule the Mage Slayer, who serves as the foundation for anti-mage's skills. When choosing him, the game calls the Mage Slayer a deadly slayer of enemy wizards, although he is not well suited to fighting many adversaries at once. Makes an excellent disabler. He had Mana Burn, a spell that drained a target's mana and dealt the same amount in magic damage. Parala Shock, a straightforward purge spell that removes buffs, slows the target, and damages summoned units. Fury, which passively increases attack speed, and his ultimate was Rift, which is functionally identical to Blink. Although his skills are kind of all over the place here, we would see them used over time and reconfigure to where they would mesh together well and have Anti-Mage become a cohesive unit. In his first iteration of Dota All-Stars in 2.60, he started out with Mana Strangle, a disable that also burned mana per second for up to 5 seconds. Definitely the odd one out, this spell still did its job to relinquish the enemy of their mana. His second ability is Spell Mantle, which is an active that creates a shield, absorbing up to 300 magic damage. Despite the fact that the spell's description says how it reduces the damage that spells do to Anti-Mage, it's a single target ability that you can totally use on an ally, so go on and be the support that Magina always wanted to be. Haste is his third skill, and it's a buff that increases Anti-Mage's attack speed and movement speed for 20 seconds on a 50 second cooldown. I guess this is what would qualify this version of AM as a carry, since the other basic spells lean more into support territory. But nonetheless, this allows him to be highly mobile and increases DPS by a considerable amount. His ultimate here is Mana Break. Huh, how do you like that? It's identical to his current Mana Break, except it only burns a flat amount, and it's an ultimate so you don't unlock it until level 6. It's not too bad overall, and its synergy with haste definitely makes AM deal a lot of damage and mana burn, so not much to complain about. In this state, we can see a lot of parallels to the current day skill set, but it's naturally more primitive. His skills here are pretty simple for the most part, but like I said, he does a great job of countering mages, especially during the laning stage. The upcoming changes would hit Anti-Mage hard and fast, as 3.0D replaced Spell Mantle with Mana Break, and he had a new ultimate called Spell Shield. So this essentially works like Lincoln Sphere, where it blocks a targeted spell every now and again. But I'm sure you've caught a glimpse of the spell description down there, so let me make a big deal out of it. There is no cooldown on this effect at level 3, so he will block every spell coming his way. God, Dota used to be so wacky. This spell did get adjusted quickly in 3.2J, where the spell block cooldown was increased to 30 seconds at level 3, so people didn't have to suffer for too long. In 4.0 Beta 2, the hero received a fairly significant new skill that you might already be familiar with. Haste was replaced with Blink, and in the tradition of using totally busted numbers in the Ginsu era, it had a 2 second cooldown and cost 1 mana at level 4. Who signed off on this one? Spell Shield was also reworked here, and it now simply increases Anti-Mage's magic resistance passively. Pretty underwhelming as an ultimate, 
At least Mana Break allowed you to be more proactive and go on the offense. This version of Spell Shield just made you slightly tankier, and it doesn't have that pizzazz that makes ultimate abilities interesting. In 4.0 Beta 10, Mana Struggle was replaced with Mana Burn, which you'll notice is a spell he had as Mage Slayer. So Anti-Mage loses a Disable, but this was a nuke that let you deal damage quicker, which seems to be the direction that he was moving in, so good change overall. Spell Shield also started granting 10% bonus damage, which isn't bad, and it at least veered away from the passive gameplay that it promoted before. In 4.10, Blink's mana cost was increased to 50, so it's just a bit harder to spam the spell, although it's still pretty busted. In 5.1, Spell Shield was replaced with Mana Void, which is similar to how it is now, except it uses a projectile for the mini stun. Its damage is pretty close to its current form, so there isn't anything significant to add here. In 5.40, Anti-Mage received his first Aghanim Scepter upgrade, which increases Mana Void's damage per missing mana, but also reduces the mini stun duration, but that part is negligible. The damage went up to 1.5 per missing mana, which is strong, but probably not worth building, as you can get more damage through typical carry items. Not that it matters, because the Scepter upgrade was removed in 5.50 anyway. Version 5.55 is where things really start coming together, because it's when Mana Burn was replaced with Spell Shield. This version of the skill, however, can be toggled on and off, and it increases his magic resist while reducing his attack speed while it's active. There is a little bit of decision making when using this spell to maximize your DPS or survivability when the situation calls for it. All in all, I think this was a fine change. It's a little better than Mana Burn to round out the character if nothing else. Over the next series of patches, it would switch between reducing attack damage and attack speed, but in 6.10, Spell Shield dropped the reductions entirely and became strictly a passive ability that increases Anti-Mage's magic resistance. Mana Void Stun Projectile also went back and forth between existing and not, but it was removed permanently starting in 6.52. Last on the list, in 6.60, Mana Void now deals damage to all units within a 275 radius around the primary target. And with that change, this anti-mage skill set would be the longest lasting and most iconic of his builds. Now Magina may be blind, but even he can see that this was a whole lot of hoopla to jump through to end up on a fairly basic set of abilities. Luckily, we are about to see a whole squad of dudes that take the anti-mage concept and make this one Mana Void. But before we do, let me ask you something. Are you subscribed to my channel? Well, there's a 73% chance that you're not. But, if you subscribe right now, there's a 100% chance that you'll make me happy. That's just good math right there. So don't forget to sub, and never forget that you're my shining star. Alright, time to talk about some other MOBAs. The most obvious character that took inspiration from the Anti-Mage would be Magebane from Heroes of New Earth, who was originally a direct port of Magina back in April 2009. This character is more of a religious zealot than the western fantasy shinobi that was Illidan, doing the gimmick a whole two years before Anti-Mage did in Dota 2. His lore ironically does paint him as someone who is deeply involved in otherworldly arts. A keeper of lost lore, and a priest to forgotten gods, Magebane invokes unholy rituals to drain the energy of his enemies, and turns it back against them. In less desperate times, heretics such as Magebane would have been burned at the stake, but this is not the first unexpected clemency brought about by the war against the Hellborn. His voice performance is similar to the Demon Hunter from Warcraft 3, portraying him as focused and battle-hardened, and with a nice reverberation that makes him sound all mystical and whatnot. In the blink of an eye, your spells mean nothing. Your mana is mine. You're finished! Magebane's had an interesting development regarding his abilities, where he started as a direct port of Anti-Mage, evolved into a unique take on the hero, and reverted right back to being a slightly weaker port. Let me try to explain this the best that I can starting from the beginning. His original skills were named Mana Combustion, Flash, Spell Resistance, and Mana Rift. These were all copied directly from Magina, so we don't need to dwell on it too much, except to mention that the sound effects and visuals were really cool. In October of 2009, around 6 months after Magebane's initial concept, version 0.1.47 gifted the Acolyte with a rework, and a nifty one to boot. Starting with Mana Combustion, Magebane would now recover mana equal to one-fourth of the mana burned. It's overkill more than anything since he doesn't really need all that extra mana, but psychologically, it always feels good to gain something for something you were going to do anyway, and I believe that this encouraged more aggressive gameplay. Flash would now add magic armor to allied heroes as well as Magebane after blinking. It's a cool implementation of the passive magic resist from the Spell Shield ability. It makes the effect more engaging because it requires for you to use a skill to activate it. But when you're playing Magebane, you're going to be blinking all the time anyway, so it's not like you lose out on the buff. 
It also doubles as a way to benefit your allies, and on a typically greedy carry like Magebane, this only made him a better pick overall. Next, Spell Resistance was replaced with Master of the Mantra. This was a passive aura that was later made toggleable that affected enemy heroes by reducing their cast speed and damaging them for up to 80% of a spell or item's mana cost when cast. This makes him a permanent nether ward that also makes throwing out spells slow down, something that I think Dota 2 should really mess around with more. This version of Magebane truly was an upgrade to the anti-mage gameplay in a lot of ways, encouraging you to be aggressive and naturally complementing the mobile gameplay while absolutely destroying the fun for any spellcasters on the enemy side. The guy did receive some nerfs over the years, like Mana Combustion no longer recovering mana, and Master of the Mantra losing the cast speed reduction portion. But jumping to a more notable change, in version 3.7.10, Mana Combustion's mana burn was changed from a flat amount to a flat amount plus a portion of the target's max mana. Now this occurred in September 2015, and Anti-Mage in Dota 2 would receive a similar effect on mana break in November 2019, so New Earth predated this by 4 years. Who said New Earth never had any good ideas? Now for something truly sad, in 4.10, Magebane went from being a unique take on the Magina gameplay, to being a carbon copy of the Anti-Mage once again. Flash no longer granted magic armor, Master of the Mantra lost its nether ward properties, and just became a passive that granted magic resistance. And for something kind of out of nowhere, Mana Rift no longer dealt damage in an AoE. So yeah, it looks like they chumped him pretty hard. And if you wanted to twist the knife a little further, 4.3.0 gave him a Staff of the Master's upgrade that allowed Mana Rift's damage to affect an AoE again, and it changed the name to Mana Void. Huh, where have I heard that before? Most recently in April of 2020, Magebane's Staff of the Master's upgrade changed once more. By this time, his ultimate did AoE damage again, and the Staff upgrade would cause another unit outside of the initial radius to be affected at 60% power. Kind of weird. It also gave Flash an extra ability, where enemy units within 600 radius of Magebane's blink location would have mana feedback applied to them, which causes active abilities cast by these affected enemies to damage them for 110% of the mana cost, somewhat bringing back the old Master of the Mantra. All the same, still seems pretty sloppy to me. So hey, you could argue that it's redundant to piss and moan about a hero years after the game fell out of relevancy, but it's my channel, damn it, and what happened to Magebane really sucked. He really was an interesting interpretation of Anti-Mage who fit into the universe of New Earth, so to see him revert back to being a port of Magina just isn't my cup of tea. And in case the copy and paste job weren't enough, there's an alternate avatar named Magus Bane that gives the hero weapons similar to Illidan's, so you can cosplay him 100%. The conversation doesn't end there though, and I think it's just as important to bring up League of Legends take on the magic-hating blinky boy, Kassadin. The Voidwalker rifted onto the Fields of Justice in version 0.9.22.7 in August 2009. Although he's a little different nowadays, his original ability showed that he was League's answer to the anti-mage archetype. His old innate passive was Voidstone, which reduced the ability damage that he took by 15% and transformed that damage into bonus attack speed. A fun defensive ability that translates into more damage is always a nice touch in my opinion. His Q, Null Sphere, was a simple single target nuke that silenced and damaged enemies, so it's the furthest thing away from Anti-Mage's skills, but a silence would be good on him now that I think about it. His original W was Netherblade. This caused Cass's physical attacks to steal a percent of his target's mana, while additionally gaining twice the mana from the attacks. If you've been keeping track of the timeline, you'll notice that Cassidin was the first character to steal mana on auto attacks, having this effect two months before Magebane did. Force Pulse didn't quite relate to Anti-Mage either, as it's a pretty typical nuke. It slows and damages in an AoE after Cassidy casts 4 spells. And of course, Cassidy's ultimate is Riftwalk. It's a short-ranged blink that deals damage in an AoE around his destination. This spell costs additional mana every time you cast it in succession. However, it would also deal more damage per cast, so provided that you have the mana for it, this could end up doing tons of damage as the community likes to call it. On paper, Cassidy looked a lot like a physical carry, much like Magina, but the neat caveat here is that he scaled pretty decently with ability power, and he ended up being played as a spellcaster, acting as an anti-AP mid lane, and even having a 100% ban and pick rate at some point for being so busted. I wouldn't normally do this for the League champions, but since Cassidy used to be such a big deal, let's listen to his voice lines as they depict a man twisted by the Void, who also harbors a disdain for magic. Your magic is powerless against me. You are null and void. Balance above all else. Hmm, ironic response, don't you think? 
Now for a game that I never thought I'd be talking about again, Heroes Evolved has Nightshade, who's essentially a roided up anti-mage. All of her spells are a direct copy of anti-mages, but with an additional effect. Her first skill is named Eclipse, which burns mana passively, and an active portion that targets an enemy unit for magic damage, and slows them for 3 seconds. Next is Silent Phantom, which is her blink spell, but it also silences enemies for up to 1.75 seconds at her destination. And it may not sound like a lot, but come on, wouldn't you want to silence on blink? Nightshade's version of Spell Shield is Hourglass. This passively grants bonus attack damage and spell resist, and for every 3 auto attacks you do, you'll gain a shield that prevents up to 300 magic damage. Truly a spell that keeps on giving, it grants a lot of utility for a skill point, and I think it synergizes well with this type of hero who likes to get in there and fight. Last but not least, Nightshade's ultimate is Night Slayer, which for the most part is just like Mana Void, but it stuns for an entire second, and it deals a base damage in addition to the missing mana. I like this character a lot, and it's definitely something to consider in the conversation of what we can do to change Anti-Mage, even if she might be overtuned compared to most heroes. Heroes of the Storm falls into the honorable mention category here, since there really isn't an analog to the Anti-Mage. So first, here's Zeratul, who has a blink, and that's kind of it. His gameplay is stealthy and all that good stuff, but his only connection to AM is the blink ability. Moving on, Illidan is featured as a hero, and I don't want to dive too deeply into his skills since they aren't very anti magey but it is interesting to see how Blizzard decided to translate his character into the context of a MOBA. So he's got his innate passive, Betrayer's Thirst, which gives Illidan lifesteal and causes his basic attacks to reduce ability cooldowns by one second. Dive is a single target ability that has him rush and flip to the other side of his target. Sweeping Strike is a dash that deals damage in a line and increases his basic attack damage if he hits an enemy, and Evasion causes him to avoid basic enemy attacks for a short time. His first heroic ability is Metamorphosis, which transforms Illidan into his demon form, dealing damage at the cast point and temporarily increasing his health for each hero hit. His other heroic is The Hunt, which is much less interesting, but what can you do? It lets you charge to a target from far away, dealing damage and stunning them for one second, so pretty much a faster charge of darkness. I'm not a fan of Illidan's gameplay here, but if I'm going to be true to my soul, having the ability to turn into a big scary monster is badass. Am I right, fellas? Okay, so that's it for now, but keep an eye out for part 2 of the history of Anti-Mage which will cover his time in Dota 2, Artifact, and Underlords. Despite saying this, I guarantee people will be asking, WHERE'S PART 2? In which case, I give you permission to reply to them with the timestamp of this message. In the last video I asked, if you could use Dark Rift once, where would you teleport to? Cheeto and Niteri Gamer both want to go to Hawaii, and hey, you two would only need to Dark Rift once to get you both there. Now that's efficiency. World of MOBA would use it to bring Dota heroes into Wild Rift, which might actually be kind of fun. And Enigma Enigma wants to teleport to 2021, because fuck 2020. Yeah, this whole year stopped being cute a while ago. Anywho, that's all for now. Please subscribe, follow me on social media, support the channel through Patreon, and have a wonderful day. See you soon!